Hello, my name is Paula Reich and I am the Curatorial Projects and Publications Manager at the Toledo Museum of Art and I would like to welcome you to For the Birds. For the Birds was inspired by the biggest week in American birding festival that happens in the Toledo area on the Lake Erie shoreline each May during the peak time for spring bird migration. Thousands of birders come from all over the country and from abroad because Northwest Ohio is the best place to be in the United States during May to see the colorful songbirds called warblers. The exhibition celebrates birds in art and is assembled mainly from the museum's own collection of works on paper with some key loans from local collectors. Artists have been depicting birds at least since prehistoric cave drawings. They've held a fascination for artists because of their beauty and their colorful plumage, the fact they can fly, and because they often carry symbolic meaning. Many of the images in the exhibition were chosen to highlight the strong ties between art, nature, and science. The show features nine prints by John James Audubon. Since childhood, Audubon had enjoyed sketching birds, and beginning in 1820, he set out across the country to paint every known North American species. He eventually completed 435 paintings of 489 species. He had his paintings translated into hand-colored etchings, which were issued as the Birds of America. Each bird is shown life-size, printed on the largest paper available at the time, which was called a double elephant folio, which is about 39 and a half by 26 and a half inches. In the great natural histories of the 18th century, birds were typically shown in profile with minimal settings. What Audubon did that was different from his predecessors was to pose the birds as he observed them moving in the wild and to show them in their habitats, often in pursuit of their food source. The whooping crane is the largest bird in North America, standing about five feet tall, so Audubon had to show it with its neck bent over feeding in order to fit it on the page. Even so, the bird was slightly too big to be contained within the etching plate, and so the neck, the tip of the beak, and the tail are completed by hand coloring outside of the plate mark. On loan from a local collector, we have a selection of hand-colored lithographs by the 19th century British ornithologist and artist John Gould, who was sometimes called the British Audubon. Over his career, he published 40 volumes and more than 3,000 plates on birds from all over the world, including Australia, New Guinea, Asia, Europe, and the Americas. Gould had a particular interest in hummingbirds and produced a book illustrating 320 species. Gould and his printers experimented with ways to hand color the lithographs in order to capture the brilliant colors and iridescence of the hummingbird's feathers, including using lacquers, transparent oil paints, and even gold leaf. Frank Benson is probably best known as an American Impressionist painter, but in the early decades of the 20th century he took up etching, making prints of the Massachusetts coastal marshes that he had loved since childhood. In the process, he pioneered and popularized the sporting art genre. He was an avid hunter, but also loved to observe and study the birds. He became involved in conservation efforts, and in 1935 designed the second federal duck stamp for the program established by the government to raise money for wetlands conservation. Several works in the show are by Japanese artists. The beauty of nature has played a central role in Japanese art and culture for centuries. The Japanese woodblock artist Ohara Kosan, who is also known as Ohara Shosan, was a master of depictions of the natural world, particularly kachoga, the genre of bird and flower images, which have a long tradition in Japanese art. His images, which were made primarily for the Western market, strike a balance between naturalism and decorativeness. The exhibition is in Gallery 18 and it runs through September 2nd, so come and see it and no binoculars required.